my gorgeous plant people. Welcome back to Rooting Mindfully. My name is Iana, and today we are fixing up some plants. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So like I said, today we are fixing up some plants and I just, I don't even know where to start. Can you guys even see the monstrosity that is on this table right now. So basically today, I'm just going to go through and clean up all these plants on this table. I think these are all the plants that have like yellowing leaves and browning leaves and things like that, except for two more plants that I wanna fix up. And one is my Philodendron plowmanii, and the other one is, huh, the other one is my Philodendron McDowell. And the other, the only reason why I haven't included those two in this video is because I basically have to start those plants from scratch. Meaning I only will have the stem, if you guys can believe it or not. Yes, I know my big beautiful boy is going, but we're gonna fix him up, it's gonna be okay. But for now, I'm just gonna fix all the plants on this table and it is a huge undertaking, so let's just get into it. All right, so I think I'm gonna have to make some room actually. And I might have to also start putting some plants on the floor, but this is the first plant that I'm gonna be fixing. It's not a major fix. It just has a couple yellowing leaves, as you can see there and there. And this is my rattlesnake calathea. It is such a beautiful calathea, but this is the slowest growing calathea that I have in my entire collection. It has not given me any other leaves except for the first initial leaves that I got when it arrived to my home. And it just hasn't really done anything, but like I said, we're just gonna cut off these yellowing leaves. <clears throat> or cut off the sections. And for, yeah, we're just gonna cut it off. But yeah, like I said, this plant has not done anything. I moved it around trying to find the best location for it. And yeah, I don't know. We'll continue to monitor this one, but yeah, this is what it looks like now. It does look a little bit more cleaner and put together. Like I said, some of these plants I'm gonna have to put on the floor so I can make room. The next plant I'll do is my red um, Valentine Aglaonema. And this Aglaonema was, do was doing so well. And I don't know what happened, it just, I don't know if you watch any of my videos, you know I struggle with Aglaonemas that are in pots of six, six inch pots or lower. I mean, it does still look like a beautiful plant, but it does have some, some crunchiness going on. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean it up. Um, and then I'm gonna also cut off these blooms. I know a lot of people, there's some discussion about whether or not you should cut off your blooms. Usually I don't cut off blooms, but I think I will start cutting off my blooms and that will go um, for alocasias, aglionemas, and anthuriums, just because, I don't know, like I didn't mind them blooming, but it seems like that's all the plant wants to do in my collection. And for me, I'd rather have leaves than a whole bunch of blooms. And I don't know, mine just bloom continuously. Like it's putting out a new bloom here that I'm like trying to pull out of the sheath. But I'm hoping that this plant will give me, just give me more leaves and you know, less blooms. But that is what this plant looks like now. I'm trying to get a good angle of it. Um, but yeah, you know my struggles with plants with six inch pots or lower. For some reason, they just don't grow as well. And I don't know. We'll see, we'll continue to monitor 
this plant I do have it outside so it is getting a lot of good lighting so I know lighting is not the issue and I have been watering it because of course being outside it's been you know hot and with the wind and everything it does dry a little bit faster but I'll just keep continuing to monitor the plant to see what it does but I haven't been buying any more aglaonemas in that size just because they haven't been doing well. And as soon as I can find a way to get mine to grow, then I can go back to buy aglaonemas that size again. The next plant is my Silver Lady Fern. And this fern I got from Green Millennium on Etsy. This plant had died completely within a matter of days of being in my home. I never had a fern die that fast until this one came into my home. But as you can see, it's been putting out a ton of new growth, just a ton. And I'm so happy because I was really upset that I, I thought I was gonna lose this fern. And so what I just wanna do is go ahead and cut off the old fronds, just so, you know, the new fronds can get all the energy that they require and the plant can look a little bit more clean. I do have a fern care. I probably have to do an updated fern collection video because I have gotten a ton of new ferns in my collection. So I, it probably is time for me to do an updated fern collection just so I can show you guys. Um, but that's what that plant looks like. It looks so much better, but this is such a beautiful plant and I'm so happy that it's turning around for me. Like you guys cannot believe how excited I am, but it's so pretty. The next fern, you'll see the trend is that a lot of ferns are on this table. And the reason is because I had one away for a couple of days. And so now I'm like getting back to getting my collection cleaned up. And unfortunately, some of the plants that suffered while I was um, traveling were my ferns, which is weird because I have a whole bunch of prayer plants and those were the ones that didn't suffer, but you know, my ferns did. This is the bamboo fern. This is one of the plants that I got this year. It was on my wish list. It doesn't look terrible, but it just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. This one has also recently put off a ton of new growth. And so I'm not really worried about this fern. I just have to continue to um, watch it now that you know, I'm um, you know, paying more attention to it. I'm just gonna clip off some of the crispy bits. Mm, let me cut that one off completely. I'm also not afraid to cut ferns back because they do, they grow back really well. So I'm not really nervous to cut these back. As well as this one also has a lot of new growth down in the base of the plant. So that also gives me a good feeling about this one growing back. It's already doing a lot of growing. And in, a, in about a month or so, it'll look like a completely new plant. So maybe I'll do an update video on these plants just so you guys can see what they look like in a couple months. Because a lot of plants do have the ability to bounce back as long as you, you know, do a little pruning and you watch them from there on out. But that looks a lot better looks a lot cleaner and I'm loving it. And like I said, it does have some growth in here, if you can see that. And so, like I said, I'm not worried about this plant at all. I know it'll be fine. All right, so the next fern I'm gonna do is my Australian tree fern. And to be honest, this plant I forgot about. And the reason why I forgot about this plant is because my McDowell with the massive leaves were kind of shading it out. So I never like saw it. And so I have forgotten about it for a long time. And that's why a lot of the leaves crisp up. 
So that was kind of, that was really like my fault for not seeing the plant and forgetting about it. But it was shaded out by another plant, so I had forgotten about it. But this is um, what it looks like now. So I just need to go ahead and trim off some of these crispy fronds. I felt so bad too by the time I finally realized. Because <laughs> um, I was like, where? I was like, I haven't um, looked at that plant in a while. And then when I like realized that I had forgotten about it, I was like, oh my goodness. Like, I felt so bad. Cause you never just want to like forget about your plants. Not unless you're like really mad at them. <laughs> like sometimes I like do get mad at my plants and I'll toss them outside because I'm like, well, you either get your act together or you're going outside. But like, I didn't mean to forget about this one. So I genuinely feel bad for forgetting about this plant. But like I said about the other ferns, it has already started to put out some new growth. So it will be okay. I just, I really feel bad about forgetting it. So I'm just going to go and clean this up. Do you guys have to clean, trim or clean up any of your plants? Have you guys ever forgotten about a plant? If you have, please comment down below so I don't feel as bad. So I know I'm not the only one that has forgotten about their plant. But yeah, I feel bad. And then my friend, my friend, oh my goodness. So my friend took a picture at my house and his friend was like, whoa, like, where are you in the rainforest? That's so many plants. And legit, the area that he took a picture only had like two plants in the picture. And I was like, really? Two plants is a lot? And he was like, well, you know, 20 plants is a lot. And I was like, what do you mean 20 plants? And he was like, you got like 20 plants in your house. And I was just like, really? <laughs> I was like, you think I only have 20 plants in my house? I was like, are you kidding me right now? I was like, I probably have 20 plants just in this in my room alone, like in my one room alone. I was like, have you? I was like, are you kidding? Have you ever counted my plants? I was like, I haven't counted my plants, but I know full well that I have more than 20 plants. I was like, really? I was like, you know, you're not good at math. I was like, I know I'm not good at math, but I know I have more than 20 plants. And I haven't really wanted to count because I really don't want to know how many plants I have and, you know, how crazy I've gone. But I know for sure that I have more than 20. But if anyone ever watches my houseplant tours and wants to count how many plants I have, feel free because I really don't want to count. This is looking a lot better already. I've been like waiting, wanting so bad to cut these plants back, but I wanted to go ahead and make a video on it just so you guys could see, because some of you requested that I show more of like my plant care and maintenance. And so I, I was like waiting for the longest time and I was, kind of getting a little restless but I was like I'm gonna make a video about this I don't want to like um just do it and not make a video because a lot of times I do things like I water my plants and I care for them without really thinking about making a video and so I had to like consciously like tell myself not to to do these things just so I can make a video and show you guys I feel like this is like cutting somebody's finger or toenails which would be gross because I I'm not a toe person if you're a toe person then that's you know good on you but for some some reason I have a thing about feet not that you guys need to know that 
but that's what that plant looks like oh my gosh it looks so much better guys i am getting excited with every new video that i'm doing with every new video that i'm doing to fix up my plants you guys cannot imagine how excited i am like this makes me so happy and less stressed but this is my next fern it doesn't um it just has a cr couple crispy bits because this was another one that got shaded out by another plant, so I never saw it. But, like, for me to forget about a plant and it not die, like, these plants are so resilient. If you ever wonder about your plant, like, most plants will be fine. So that's why a lot of times when I do go, go places and I have to leave my plants or I need to take a break from my plants just so I can, you know, have that mental space. I'm not too worried about them because I know like in the long run they'll be okay. And most of them will be able to recover. So that one was easy to do. It looks so good. And I'll try to take pictures or clips of some of these, but there are a lot of plants, so if I don't do one, then please don't hate me. Another one is my Alocasia Friday, which is looking so good. If I do say to myself, just have one leaf that I need to clip off. So easy. I like to take off these little husks these little husk things too because sometimes when you have pests and things like that they will hide in those little husks and you know camp out there and you could be spraying and spraying and doing all your treatments and stuff but sometimes if you don't get down in those husks you might not get the pests so I like to start peeling those off and this one will need a watering so I will leave this one on the table but yes she looks so good. Look at all these beautiful leaves. All right, so I'm just gonna put her there cause she needs water. Um, the next plant I'm gonna do is my Syngonium Mojito. It's looking quite dapper if I do say so. This one needs a stick and I think I threw away my sticks, which we will have to figure out what to do with this one, but this is what the mojito looks like. Has a couple crispy bits as well. So I'm just gonna cut these off. I'm tempted to kind of propagate this plant because I don't like how one stem is getting extremely tall and it's bringing down the stem of the other, the other stems, if you know what I mean. Like it's kind of weighing the plant down So I'm trying to think of what I want to do with this plant. But it's kind of staying up now, but it, it will need a stick if it keeps, if it continues to grow, which of course I want it to do. But yeah, that's what that one looks like. What is happening? You guys can see it. There we go. So that looks a lot better. But as you can see, like this main stem is doing like a lot of the pooling. But I don't know, what should we do? Maybe I'll wait a little bit longer to propagate this one just because I've already propagated so many plants already and I don't have any more mason jars. So I'll wait to propagate this one. But yeah, it's definitely gonna need to be done because it's weighing this plant down. Alright, let's just do all the plants on this side. Alright, so my next plant is my champion bird's nest fern. And this one is actually not bad at all. It just, like I said, has some crispy bits in here that I just want to clean it up just a little bit. Just have it looking a little bit better, you know. And if I didn't say so, 
I'm pretty sure I said so. But like I said, I just left a lot of this on there so that way you guys could see that, you know, my plants aren't perfect. I do have a lot of plants that will yellow out on me or they get dead leaves. And it's also, I mean, that's part of the plant cycle, the life cycle. You know, you will get le yellow leaves from time to time. But I find that as long as you keep up on the plants or you try to when you can that they'll be fine like I said I just wanted to let you guys see that my plants aren't perfect and you know everybody gets a yellowing leaf here and there I also wanted you to see what they look like after being cleaned up like that is gorgeous gorgeous I don't know why I'm singing this stuff. All right. <laughs> this is my maiden air fern. Like what in the actual, what in the actual? This one I actually forgot about because it was behind my blinds. And part of me just wants to cut the whole top off. Cut the whole top off and restart the plant. And I think that's what I'm gonna do actually. Yeah, let's just cut the whole thing and we will begin anew. And I'm hoping, I'm thinking that this is going to grow back. I already do see some new growth deep in here. So this plant will be fine. But yeah, I already see some new growth like down in there. And so it'll grow back. This one's not dead. I was thinking about throwing it away, but I don't know, I'm all about second chances, you know? Second chances. So I'm just gonna put this in the window, make sure I water it, try not to forget about it again. I'm actually gonna check my moisture meter to it right after this video so I can make sure that I am on top of things. And yeah. This is my bird's nest fern. Do you guys know this is like my OG, one of my favorite ferns in my collection. And it just has like three yellow leaves that I just want to cl clip off. But yeah, this is my favorite fern. Favorite, hands down. I just love how broad it is. It makes your collection look so lush and full. And all of the fronds just come out so lush and shiny easily one of my favorites easily guys we are going through these plants we only have one more oh uh, so after this one this is my aglonema cutlass this one has been growing okay it has been still growing a little bit slow this one is outside on my patio and so i'm just going to cut off these like wilted faded leaves and the plant will look a lot better because this is what it looks like now and so like I said I'm just going to cut off these like wilted leaves I actually saw an Aglaonema Romeo at the um, Oak Country Gardens if you watch that nursery tour I saw a beautiful beautiful Aglaonema, a huge one. Like I said, it was the Romeo, and I, I wanted to get the plant so bad, but I was just like, mm, should I? Like, should I not? But that plant looks like this plant, but the leaves are more, um, like more broad. This one, they're they're definitely more narrow and skinny. But I wanted that plant so bad. And I will put a picture in of the, what the plant looks like. And I'm just like, should I have gotten it? I don't know. But the plant, it was in a, like a 10 inch pot, which is like the perfect size from the aglaonemas that I like to get. And the only thing is it was like $60. So I was like, do I want to spend that much on the aglaonema? I don't know. But this is what the cutlass looks like now. Actually, it looks a lot better now that i've taken some cuttings off of it i'm actually loving it again actually see this is what i like say sometimes like if you get like tired of your plants or you want to buy a plant 
then just, you know, go around your, your house and do some propagating or do some chopping just to change it up. Because sometimes it really does help when you want to buy a plant and you shouldn't necessarily buy a plant. Um, and this is my Anthurium clarinervium. This is a beautiful plant. And it has been getting a lot of yellow leaves, as you can see in there. And it is blooming all the time. As you can see, there's two blooms on it currently, and I'm chopping them both off. Because I'm like, give me more leaves. I don't want all these blooms anymore. I just want leaves. So I'm going to try to cut off the blooms without cutting off any beautiful leaves. But yeah, I'm just like, this thing is always blooming. And I'm glad the plant is happy. But like, it's happy, but it's not happy. Because obviously it's getting yellow leaves. But then it's blooming. So this plant kind of confuses me. And then when I first started seeing these yellow leaves, I was like, man, like, what am I doing wrong? Um, I was like, I'm killing the plant. And I was like getting so upset. Well, not like that upset, but I was like, man, I'm like killing this plant. And I have no idea why. But then I was like looking at the plant and I was turning it around. And then this leaf, I saw this leaf here and I was like, whoa, like this is a new leaf because it's not like hardened off all the way. So I was like, this is a new leaf and it's the biggest leaf out of all of them. So I was like, man, well, I got yellow leaves, but like it's, it's got this huge new leaf. So I was like, I'm not too, like, I'm not too ups upset now. Like that's actually really good. So I don't know, I was looking on the brighter side of things. And I do need to Velcro this because it is really top heavy. I might have to end up potting this plant deeper so that way it'll stand up. It'll have more support. And I am gonna go ahead and trim off some of this leaf here. And when you trim off leaves, you just want to make sure that you're not cutting into the green part of the plant. You don't want to go ahead and make any additional wounds in the plant. So that way the plant will not have to heal any new wounds while trying to grow at the same time. You also don't want to um, create any new wounds that could cause bacteria infections. So you have to just be careful of that. But some of these brown bits happen when, during the winter, there was a drop in humidity, like a very substantial drop. I think my, my home went below like 47%. And so that's why I have a lot of crisping on some of these leaves is because I had this random drop of humidity and it was like a really big drop. And if you guys watch my channel, you know that I have relatively high humidity like all the time. And so for my humidity to just drop like that is kind of a big deal for my plants. Just gonna get some of these crispies off. All right. So that looks really good now. You guys can see, oh my gosh, that looks so amazing. Guys, I'm like falling in love with my collection all over again. But yeah, this is my Anthurium clarinervium. And yeah, so that was the last plant of the day. I feel so much better. I feel like with every video, I'm getting closer and closer to what my plants are supposed to look like. And it's making me so happy. Oh, wait, I forgot a plant. <laughs> I forgot this plant. This is my Syngonium macrophyllum. 
this is what happened when I chopped it down. If you guys remember, like this plant was huge and I chopped it down. If, if you remember, it was like a huge beanstalk and I just completely cut it back. And so this is the product of that. And it just has some like wilted leaves because because when it was inside, I did forget to water it a couple times. You know, I'm not the most perfect plant parent. I try my hardest, but some of them do escape me, which is why I am not balling out buying new plants anymore. Because obviously, um, I had a bit of an issue trying to keep up. Mm. And this one, this branch here even snapped. How did that happen? Well, like, where is that? Hmm. Interesting. So I already have a propagation here, but the curious thing is that the aerial root is actually rooted into the soil. So I could either just like leave it there, or that's kind of weird, or I could just like cut the aerial root, which seems like the logical thing to do. We're just gonna cut the aerial root. So here's a propagation of my macrophyllum that I hadn't intended to do. But yeah, so this is my macrophyllum. It's growing in these like cute, adorable leaves. And I almost decluttered this plant at one point because I wasn't really liking how it was, you know, growing. But now that it's growing in these little cute, petite leaves, I'm like kind of like liking this now. I might even cut off the bigger leaves just so I can have a bunch of tiny, cute leaves. But look, that's kind of cute. So yeah. And so now that is the last plant on this table. And I cannot tell you, like it felt so good to get like all these plant chores done and to have my collection look a thousand times better. But I just wanna thank you guys for following along with me on this journey. It means a lot to me. This has been a lot easier for me to just break it up this way and get my plant collection back on track. Because if I try to do this all in one step, I would tell you now, I would be so overwhelmed with it. But doing it like this has made it like fun and enjoyable and just like bring you guys along with me has been really fun. But yeah, like, I just wanna thank you guys so much for, you know, liking and subscribing and even encouraging me um, to be a better plant parent. Like, it means a lot. And I, like, you guys inspire me as much as I try to inspire you guys. And so it's just not like a one-way street, if you know what I mean. But yeah, so I just wanna thank you for liking and subscribing. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.